Thank you very much. You may be seated. <laughs> to our beloved President, William Jefferson Clinton, to Secretary Riley, to Secretary of Slater, uh, Transportation Rodney Slater, who's over on the side, uh, to uh, his Deputy Chief, uh, Mr. Malone, uh, to Senator, Lou, Senator Lincoln, Representative Barry, Lieutenant Governor Rockefeller, other state, uh, state Representative Steve Jones, to other state and county and elected officials, our state director of education, Mr. Ray Simon, ladies and gentlemen, parents, students, and friends. Welcome to our official dedication of the Earl High School. It's a grand occasion to stand before you and for this moment. I want you to know that as pleased as we are, first I just want to say thanks to everyone who has attended, to President Clinton especially, for him deciding with his busy schedule that our school was not only a small school, but friendships that are forged long ago but also that our president thinks highly of the programs that we've implemented here and some of the educational opportunities that we are providing for our children. Again, thank you very much, Mr. President. To Secretary Riley. Thank you very much for stopping me in the hall and I see someone has already um, talked to our Secretary of Education because he said I hear tell you have some information that you need to give me. So that's great and um, we're looking forward to speaking with him a little later. But what I want to say is that while we're here and it's great and it's wonderful and you look around you, I want you to know that just like Mr. Nix was emotional, I'm filled with joy. We are very, very proud of our school. Our school was not obtained very, very easily. I took over to the superintendency here in July of 1993. At that time, we were a school with low morale and I guess about every problem that schools have within the Delta. But with the help of God Almighty and a board and the patrons of this community, we set out to just simply do one thing. We adopted a motto. It's a motto that we really stole from Lee Coca, <laughs> that we are on a quest to be the best. And we've never looked back. In 1994, during the summer of 94, we actually asked the board if they would place on the ballot a millage to build a new school. The board at that time balked on that idea and it failed. The next year, the board was, I had a few people to change on the board. Matter of fact, I had four new members on the board. And uh, again, I asked the board if they would place the millage on the board. By that time, instead of taking just 7.8 mils to build a new school, with the addition of the uh, uh, state revenue to make uh, the 25 mils MNO, we had to ask the patrons for 13.2 mils, and they were paying 23 mils, a significant increase. But we worked, we worked, and we worked. And I'm proud to say that the patrons of this school district felt in their hearts and dug in their pockets because they passed the second largest millage in the history of the state of Arkansas by a 70% margin. So let's give this community a hand. So without a, without a struggle, there's no progress. Those are the words of Frederick Douglass. So indeed, we did have to struggle. You would think after passing that enormous millage that that was the end of our problem, but no, it wasn't. 
this very site had to be challenged in court, and we had to go to court and, and really condemn the land and take it through eminent domain. During that particular time, our costs were, we had to borrow over a million dollars due to the delayed and cost overrun. But I just here to say that God is a good God. <laughs> that finally, on August the 19th of this year, approximately three years, 11 months, and two days to the day, we open the doors of this facilities for our students, and I want to tell you how proud we are. So again, we just, we're just really happy and elated. But those were some of the tough times. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. <laughs> so we want you to know that the people in this community always hang tough. And at this time, I'd just like for my bosses to stand the Earl School Board of Directors, would you please stand? Mr. Hoover Williams, Board President, <laughs> Reverend Connie Moore, Mrs. Cartwright, Mrs. Annie Booker, and Reverend McKenzie. Thank you very much. You can be seated. As Mr. Nix stated earlier, they would taken numerous hits. Matter of fact, they even hated to go down to the old mad butcher because people were always buttonholing them, trying to complain about we weren't going to ever finish the new school. But we did. Right now, it becomes my pleasure. I'm going to end that part and want to ask, if you would, uh, President Clinton, if you would stand, please. Come forward. We want you to know that you've had some problems, I've heard, with those people in Little Rock trying to get a Clinton library. You know, they're fussing and they're fussing in hope. But hey, we here, we in love, Earl, we, we care about you. So to just make this dream come true, we have a little gift for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like for the board to come forward, Mr. Nix, the principal. <laughs> Who said it couldn't be done? the first Clinton Library in the state of Arkansas. President of the United States for your continued and outstanding service to enhance the quality of education for the students of the United States, Mr. Nix Principal, Mr. Hoover Williams Board President, and J.B. Crumley Superintendent, December 10th, 1999. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> oh, don't, don't go away. You may be seated. Now, I know, Mr. President, that you're here for a celebration in the Delta. That's right. So I'm going to ask Mr. Nix, you know you're not you properly attired. Take that off. That off. <laughs> now you are tied for this occasion. <laughs> President of the United States. Our honorary bulldog. Okay. Again, it's a great day. Thank you, Mr. President. We're going to have to move ahead. We, after all, now he's a lot better off than he was when he first got here. Now he has a library, and he's an honorary bulldog. What else can you ask for? But at this time, I'd like to, 
falls my pleasure to introduce another friend, a fellow Crittenden Countyan, a person who lives and resides in our county, a person who first uh, entered public service as an aide to uh, Bill Alexander and later went on to succeed him as U.S. Representative. She has done an outstanding job. And during that time, while she was serving as our congressman from the 1st Congressional District, old matrimony came calling, and she got married. And then after that, she decided that she would raise a family and had a set of twins, so she resigned from Congress. After the twins were born, her, her state called her again back into political service, and she accepted and she was elected our senator. So at this time, without any further ado, and to move the program along, it becomes my pleasure to introduce the U.S. Senator from the state of Arkansas, Mrs. Blanche Lambert Lincoln. A great day for Earl. Yeah! What a great day. And let me tell you, party is no fun unless folks come to it. Thank you all for being here. You're the reason we're here. This is the party. You're it. Thank you. It has truly been an honor and a privilege of mine to spend the day with our former governor, our president, and as I told more than 1,000 people who joined us at the Civic Center uh, in West Memphis, this is an important day for East Arkansas. I look out in this crowd and I see many, many people, many, many friends of mine who have helped me along my pathway, who have made a difference in my life, and who have helped me to get where I can be helpful to East Arkansas. As a daughter of the Delta, it is also a proud day for me. I am so happy to be here at Earl High School, home of the Bulldogs. Yeah! yeah! And I am so very proud to join a small town celebrate a giant achievement. Earl holds a special place for me because many of you all know that I was raised in a small town much like Earl, in a seventh generation Arkansas farm family, where I went to school at the local school much like uh, the Bulldogs here. I was a cougar at that time at Helena Central. It was a good team. I don't know that we had quite this much spirit, but we had some good spirit. <laughs> and now I live just south of you all on Highway 147 at Horseshoe Lake, a resident of Crittenden County. But Earl is truly a small town with a big heart, a community, a real community that pulls together. And one of the things that makes you such a special place is the high priority that you put on educating and caring for your children, as is evidenced with President Clinton's visit here today. But let me tell you, there is no greater thing that we can do in this nation than to put our children and their future as our number one priority. Our children are our greatest national resource. I believe that with all my heart. As the mother of twin boys that are three and a half, I know that our children are our greatest resource. And I know that the community of Earl agrees with me on that. Today is evident. I'd also like to congratulate you all on a beautiful new gymnasium. As students know and as parents know as well, because they were students at one time too, but a gym is a very special place in a school and in a school community. It's a center of activities and sports, and it's a place that's full of pride and spirit and self-confidence, where many students of different ages and backgrounds come together under one roof for their home team 
and for their school, their school community as a whole. So it is a great honor for me to be here to join with you all in celebrating our greatest resource, our children, in celebrating your community spirit that has brought you together to build this fine facility on behalf of those children. I would especially like to thank the Principal Nix for his leadership and the dedication to your, our children in this community. And I'd also like to make a special, <laughs> special thanks to Superintendent Crumbly. Uh, he has done a fabulous job, a wonderful job. And it's not just here. He has done it all of his life with children all throughout the Delta, and he has left a mark on many lives. Now today, I'm also proud to introduce and bring to you all a good friend of mine and a friend to students and educators all over this country. As Secretary of Education, Dick Riley has been a principled and dedicated leader. President Clinton chose him to serve as the head of the Department of Education after witnessing his success as governor of South Carolina. In fact, Secretary Riley was so successful as governor and so loved by the people of South Carolina that they changed their state constitution in order for him to serve another term as governor. Now that, Secretary Riley, is my kind of public servant, the kind who gets things done. He is here to help us get some things done in the Delta. He already has. He uh, was kind enough to help me during my campaign and my time as U.S. Congresswoman in the House. I please, please join me in giving a wonderful, wonderful, warm East Arkansas welcome to our Secretary of Education, Dick Riley. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Senator. You know, um, in 1998, Senator Lincoln became the youngest woman ever elected to the Senate. The Constitution requires you to be at least 30 years old before you can serve, and she just barely got in. But I will tell you this, she has been a wonderful, wonderful Senator and Congress person as has uh, Marion Barry, and it's just been a great pleasure for us to work with them. You know, we were, uh, this weekend, the President and I had the good opportunity to meet with the honorees of the Kennedy Center, and one of them was Stevie Wonder. Now, you have heard of Stevie Wonder, I'm sure. Stevie, and the, my fortune was that I got to sit with Stevie and have dinner with him, my wife and I, the night before the honorees were recognized. And one of his great songs was, you know, I just called up to say, I love you. And uh, I was thinking about that when I heard this warm greeting that the president had, and everybody seems to be in such good spirit and such wonderful energy that I just wanted to say, uh, to use Stevie's words, that the president and I and Rodney and all the rest of us I just came by to say, we love you. <laughs> the um, enthusiasm of the crowd, the people here of Earl, are making a great commitment to education. You know, and I see these students with all the energy and excitement, and, and they re respect all of these teachers. All of you who are in education, uh, teachers, principals, Superintendents, I see community college presidents who are here, school board members, if you'd all raise your hand, just so I can get an idea. Isn't that great? Well, that's students, let's give them a hand. All over here. <clears throat> we are looking forward to seeing some of your classrooms here, and the president is looking forward to it. Uh, the president recently uh, became the first president to conduct an online town hall meeting. It was a great success. I was proud of him. He's uh, really picking up this computer pretty good as he works on it. <laughs> and uh, I understand that some of the technology here at Earl High was supported by the <laughs> E-rate program, something that we fought very hard for, and Vice President Gore was a leader in it. 
Also, our Technology Literacy Challenge Fund is something that I'm very proud has been a help here to help you with technology. And that's a great example of how the national government, your national government, uh, can be supportive of people like uh, Superintendent Crumbly, Crumbly and all of the other people here who represent you. And thanks to President Clinton's leadership, education is now this nation's top priority throughout the country. <laughs> we have a uh, great partnership in the community colleges across the country. We had such a great visit over in the Mid-South uh, Community College, uh, Dr. Fenter and those there. Uh, and I am so pleased to see that there are a number of community colleges here. There are 38 community colleges uh, in the Delta region, and that's a region we're going to be working with very strongly. And we're working closely with the local, state, educators, parents, community leaders, and all to make sure that every single child, every child, that's the president's goal, every child has access to high-quality education. And I'm grateful to all of you here who have responsibility in the seven Delta states, all of you local officials, teachers, all of the school folks who are committed to make sure that every child here in Earl, that every child in this Delta region has a world-class education. That's our goal. That's what this president wants to do as president. And now it's a great pleasure for me uh, they thought you were here all excited about the president, but you were really here to hear from the person that I'm going to introduce, Jimmy Lampley. I would say uh, <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> hear it for Jimmy. All right. Let me say, all right. Wait a minute. Let me, let me introduce her first. Let me tell you some things about Jimmy. You know, I'm proud of all that uh, Bill Clinton's done in his life. I believe Jimmy's done more than the president has. You listen to all these things. <laughs> president of the junior class, president of the FFA, member of the Beta Club, future business leaders of America, future homemakers of America, the Spanish Club, student council, pep club, statistician for Earl High School <laughs> athletic department. Jimmy has a grade point a average of 3.5. She's a tutor for Earl School District for three years. She aspires to be a computer analyst, and I assure you she will always be, always be a wonderful citizen for this great country. And it's now my great pleasure to present to you Jimmy Lampley. Jimmy? <laughs> to have been given this great opportunity. Introducing the President of the United States is the most thrilling thing that has happened to me in my 16 years. In addition to this, I feel that I am blessed by God to be a fourth generation student in the Earl School District. In this age of technology, where change takes place in all phases of our lives by the click of a mouse, we are truly blessed to have such a high-tech computer lab in our school system. We have access to the internet, connecting us to the whole world. Thanks to our school board, the administration, and dedicated teachers. Our town is small, but our access to information is universal. I did a little research of my own about our president. We all know that he was born in Hope, Arkansas, and attended high school in Hot Springs, Arkansas. One thing that stuck out in my mind when I was reading different articles about him was that he met President Kennedy when he was about my age. So when I was informed by my superintendent, Mr. Crumley, and principal, Mr. Nix, that I had been given this opportunity, my mind started to race. This opportunity today tells me that all things are possible. <laughs> that nothing you can imagine in your wildest dreams is impossible, because never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I would be introducing the President of the United States and that he would be from Arkansas. I am so thankful for having been a part of the preparation for this occasion. It has been a wonderful experience for all of us. At this time, I would like to bring to you the President of the United States, President William Jefferson Clinton. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Well, this is a wonderful end to one of the best days I've had in a long, long time. I am. Uh, We started out this morning in Little Rock, and I spoke at the annual uh, Chamber of Commerce banquet. I talked to him about the library and the public policy center. I wanted to build not just for Little Rock, but for our entire state. And then I went to West Memphis to the community college, which uh, I helped to establish, which, where the enrollment, by the way, has increased by tenfold since I've been president. I'm very proud of them, and I know all of you are. And I told them that I was going to support the legislation sponsored by Senator Lincoln and Congressman Barry with $110 million for a Delta Commission to invest in the economic future of the Mississippi Delta next year. <laughs> then I got a little barbecue <laughs> and sidled up here to Earl. Thank you, Secretary Riley, for making this journey with me and the journey of the last 22 years now. Thank you, Secretary Slater, for coming out of the Arkansas Delta and going all the way to become Secretary of Transportation. I'm not sure you heard the superintendent when he said this, but Secretary Slater's chief of staff and a longtime supporter of mine is a wonderful attorney named Jerry Malone who graduated from Earl High. I want to thank my friend of 30 years, the Lieutenant Governor Rockefeller, for making this trip with us today. I thank my longtime friends, County Judge Brian Williams and Mayor Sherman Smith. I <clears throat> we also have the head of the National Endowment for the Humanities, uh, Bill Ferris, who's from the other side of the Mississippi River in Mississippi here with us today. I thank him for coming. And I want to introduce the Vice President and Foundation Executive of MCI, Caleb Schutz, who has decided to help this school. And I'll explain more about why later, but thank you very much. And uh, <clears throat> I'd like to thank all the people from the Arkansas Department of Education who are here, Mr. Simon and others. Thank you, Principal Nix and members of the school board. And thank you, Jimmy Lampley. You were terrific. And uh, <clears throat> I have to tell you, when I met President Kennedy in 1963, I didn't give him a library. <laughs> I didn't even give him one of my Trojan band jackets. <laughs> now I got this football jacket making me an honorary bulldog. You won't believe this, but when we were down in West Memphis, we had this meeting about how we could train people in the Delta that don't have jobs to get some of these real good jobs in transportation. There are 80,000 jobs driving trucks and working in terminals, for example, vacant today. So Secretary Slater was working on that, and he invited the man who runs the USA truck line from Fort Smith, but they train all the truck drivers here in West Memphis. So the guy's been my friend forever. I mean, he's been my friend for 27 years, and coincidentally, he runs his truck line, and he trains all his truckers here in West Memphis. So. Right before I come up here to get this jacket and become an honorary bulldog, he whips, I said, you got any pictures of your wife and daughter? And he said, yeah, he takes us this beautiful picture of his wife and his 12-year-old daughter, and they've got a bulldog there. I said, what's that bulldog's name? And he smiled and he said, Clinton. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna have a picture taken in this jacket and send it to him and have two bulldogs in the house. And we both respond in the same way. It'll be great. <laughs> Finally, let me say a word about your superintendent. He has been a friend of mine a long time. I have known him probably since before most of the students here were alive. I have eaten his good food in his former life. 
I have met with his students. I have listened to year after year after year after year of fresh, vigorous ideas and passionate commitment, believing that the children of the Delta were as smart as any kids on Earth and had a right to the best education on Earth and become anything else they wanted to be on Earth. I've had him sidle up to me with that sort of soft voice. You know, the way he kind of does his head like this, you know? I know him, man. I know him. I've been, I've been there. Now, Governor, we just need a little money for this little thing. Here. Now, you know how you love these kids. You don't want to let them get behind here. What are you laughing about, Leon? You do the same thing. <laughs> so, anyway, I was thrilled when he came here. You know, our tenures pretty well coincide. He came here not long after I became president. And I wasn't surprised when you approved that big bond issue. Because this guy believes in your kids. He spent a lifetime a lifetime that happened to coincide with this dramatic change in the economic and social organization of the Mississippi Delta. He spent a lifetime trying to lift up our kids. And I say thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. Now, I rode over here with my good friend Ness Seekers from West Memphis today, and we were thinking about all the trips we'd taken to Earl. It sort of was an automatic stop for me. Whenever I get in the deep funk, I'd come to Earl. It gets to feel better <laughs> when I was governor. <clears throat> and I miss so much. I want to say this before I leave Crittenden County. My man who was always my county coordinator here, Ron Owens, passed away in the last year, and I miss him terribly, and I wish he were making this trip with me today because I loved him like a brother. But one time we came up here in 1982 and I was trying to get reelected governor and uh, we went to the church in God and Christ, Representative Jones Church and uh, at the time <coughs> Bishop Walker came with me and at the time Ron and Carrie Page were passing the church there back over there and I see Finest, thank you for coming, bless you, aren't you cute, thank you Finest John. And, uh, so first the choir got to singing and Carrie got to singing and then the bishop called my opponent old hoghead on statewide <laughs> television. And I said to myself, I'm either in or out after this. I don't know whether I am in or out, but something's going to happen now. There you are. Thank you, Bishop Walker. Thank you. In the bishop's defense, he only said that after the man I was running against said, that African Americans in Arkansas would vote for a duck if it was on our ticket. So it was a reaction, not an action, and God forgave him for his harshness. And so did the voters, I might add. Anyway, I've been back to that church many times. And I've been back to this town many times, and I never come here without feeling renewed because there's so much courage and hope in spirit. And today, what I would like to say to you is this. First, thank you. Thank you for all the years we worked together, all the roads we walked together, all the times you gave me a chance to serve. I think that because of the times we went through, I was better prepared to deal with America as I found it in January of 1993. High unemployment, social decline, political division, discredited government. And now, thanks in no small measure to what I learned working with you, we got the lowest unemployment and welfare rolls in 30 years and the lowest poverty rates in 20 years. We've got 20 million jobs in the first back-to-back -back budget surpluses in 42 years. We are 
on our way to taking this country out of debt in 15 years for the first time since 1835. And along the way, we have immunized 90% of our children against serious diseases for the first time. And over 7 million young people have already taken advantage of the Hope Scholarship tax cut to go on to college. I think it's been a good seven years for our country. And underneath that, we see the beginnings of equality starting to emerge. Nationwide, we have the lowest African American and Hispanic unemployment rates ever recorded. We have the lowest female unemployment rate in 40 years. We have the lowest crime rate in 25 years. This is all good news. But I came here today to ask the people of Arkansas, the people of the Delta, and the people of America one more time, what are we going to do with this prosperity? And one thing that I say over and over again is, countries are like no different from people and families and schools and football teams and businesses. It's easy to concentrate when you're in trouble and your back's against the wall. The great British essayist Samuel Johnson said, nothing so concentrates a man's mind as the prospect of his own destruction. But when things are rocking along pretty good, people lose their concentration. And I've been saying to America, look, we never had a time in our history when the economy was this strong and the society was coming together and we don't have an internal crisis or an external threat, this is responsibility time. This is a time to look at those big questions that will affect the future of these children here, to take care of the retirement of the baby boomers now, to give all these kids a good education now, to bring economic opportunity to places like the Delta that haven't been part of this prosperity. Now, if we can't do this now, we will never get around to doing this. Now is the time to be responsible and think about the long-term welfare. And as I said earlier today, I talked about the economic issues, the thing I'm going to try to do for East Arkansas, the entire Delta. And I, I want to give credit again where credit is due. I have been relentlessly pursued to do more and more and more by your senator and your congressman. Now, I get lobbied by 435 members of the House and 100 senators. Believe it or not, even the Republicans ask me for things from time to time. <laughs> there is nobody any better or any more passionate than Senator Blanche Lambert Lincoln and Representative Marion Barry. And you ought to know that. They have taken care of you. <clears throat> Today, I want to talk just a little more about education and what we're trying to do and what we need to try to do to help you reach your full potential. In the last session of Congress, we got funds to double the amount of after-school programs that we have in our schools. That's really important for children everywhere. I don't believe that we should promote people who don't learn, but I don't think we should punish people if the Senate, if the system fails them. We need to give the kids that need extra help extra help, and the schools that can't afford it ought to have the resources they need to give that kind of extra help so everybody can learn. I think it is important. Thank you. I think it is important that we hook up all of our classrooms to the internet, first all our schools, then all our classrooms. When Vice President Gore and I said in 1994, we want to wire all of our schools, including the poorest schools in America. And we're going to get the private sector to help us. And then we're going to make sure we train the teachers, because otherwise the kids will know more about the computers than the teachers. <laughs> and uh, then we're going to make sure that the poor schools can't afford it. And we passed something called the Telecommunications Act. For the first time in 60 years, we revised our communications laws, and the part of that we said we'll have this E-rate, which will give a discount to schools. Now, here, you connected the computers that you got from our Technology Literacy Challenge grant to the internet with the help of $100,000 in discounts for the E-rate. That's what it meant to Earl, $100,000 in discounts so you could afford to be on the internet just like the wealthiest school districts 
in the United States of America. In the budget I signed last month, there will be another $60 million in educational investments coming to the Delta, including $7 million to hire 200 more teachers for smaller classes in the early grades, which I think is very important. Now, to give you an idea, I'm kind of proud of this. I, when, when we said, when Al Gore and I started working on this, only 3% of the total classrooms in America and 14% of the total schools had any internet hookup. Now, over 50% of the classrooms and over 80% of the schools in America in just five years are hooked up to the internet and can afford to be thanks to this E-rate. So you're a part of the future, and I wanted to thank you for that. Now, what I'd like to do now is to announce a generous new initiative coming not from the government, but from MCI WorldCom Foundation to give the teachers at Earl High School and across the Delta region unprecedented access to the kind of world-class educational materials that in the past only the wealthiest school districts could afford. In cooperation with National Geographic and Mr. Ferris's National Endowment for the Humanities, the foundation, the MCI WorldCom Foundation, has developed a wonderful website called Marco Polo. It contains lesson plans and resource materials and everything from history to math to art. These lesson plans for teachers have been developed by some of our finest teachers and academics, and now they're available absolutely free over the internet thanks to MCI. Now to take advantage, <laughs> is Caleb Schutz here, the man, who is here from MCI? Stand up, stand, everybody from MCI, stand up. Thank you. Give him a hand. Thank you. Now, so that the teachers can utilize the website, the Marco Folo Foundation will train free of charge as many as 4,500 district curriculum specialists throughout the seven state Mississippi Delta region. They will then train 100,000 plus teachers on how to use the website. A teacher in Earl, for example, will learn to go to the website, click on Humanities, and be guided to a series of lesson plans on, say, the life of Socrates developed by the experts at the National Endowment for the Humanities. The lesson plan then links to sites containing Plato's writings on Socrates, commentary by leading scholars. Then it would provide questions teachers can ask students, such as imagining whether Socrates would have chosen to die for his ideas if Martin Luther King had been in a jail cell with him. It's a very interesting question. I think the answer to that is, Probably. <laughs> the site then links Dr. King's letter from the Birmingham jail, where King praises Socrates for being, and I quote, attention in the mind, so that individual could rise from the bondage of myths and have truths. Now just imagine helping high school students explore the idea of civil disobedience from Socrates to Martin Luther King over a period of 2,500 years and being able to do it in every single school, no matter how rural, no matter how poor, no matter how distant, anywhere in the United States of America because of the generosity of MCI in this program. We thank them again. The idea is you've got to train the teachers because it is going to be more and more possible every day for every school in America to offer lessons like these. Things that would have been undreamed of just a couple of years ago simply because of technology if all the teachers can access it, make the most of it, and get the students involved in it. The second thing I want to say is we're going to hold two conferences to help rural communities gain access to all the federal programs that exist today but that are too hard for many small rural towns with part-time mayors and small staffs to keep up with. On March the 9th next year in Jonesboro, the Department of Education, thank you, Secretary Riley, will host a conference to help law enforcement officers and rural educators learn how to apply for school safety and drug prevention grants to develop safer schools. 
Then the department will host a conference in Helena to help rural colleges attain grants and assistance from federal agencies so that nobody will ever be denied access to college or a good college education because of where they live or what their income is. These things are very, very important. Now, let me just say this in closing. We can do all this, but the students have to do the most. You got to believe that just because you live in a part of the country that had a tough time in the last 15 years, when the whole economy changed and the world dumped upside down, you still got to believe that you're just as smart as anybody anywhere. I believe that. And you got to believe that. But you also have to believe what that great genius Sigmund Freud said. He said, genius is 90% effort. Or, you know, I can't remember some which great athlete said, you know, a lot of athletics is luck, and it's amazing. The harder I practice, the luckier I get. <laughs> so the students here have to be committed to this. We can give you the tools of the 21st century. We can give you a chance to dramatically leapfrog the, the economic as well as the educational prospects that might have otherwise been here for you, but you still got to show up for work every day. You got to suit up as students the way you suit up in athletics or in band or anything else. You got to suit up. Now, it's more fun with the computers, it's more exciting with these modern programs, but I'm telling you, the future of this country, not just the future of this community and this county and this part of our state, the future of this country is riding on whether all of our children, without regard to their race or their background, can make the most of their God-given abilities. And to do it, you've got to be willing to work. And to be willing to work, you've got to believe. Nobody will pay a price for a goal that he or she believes cannot be obtained anyway. The thing that I liked the best about this whole day <clears throat> was Jimmy saying, when she got to introduce me and shake hands with me, and she thought about me meeting President Kennedy, she realized she could do anything. That's true for the rest of you. So go out and do it. Thank you, and God bless you.